Thanks so much for joining us today. We're really excited. Pastor Mark has chapter three of the book of Ephesians that he's teaching on today. It's really great. I got to hear it in the first service. You're going to love it. Um, we can't wait for you to join us. Today we are in our series, the book of Ephesians. And we are going through it chapter by chapter. I hope you're enjoying this. I am so excited to bring this word because I feel like it's going to encourage you. It's encouraged me. And I think that there is a lost hunger for the word of God that we want to rekindle in your life, that you will see it in context and you will go deep in it. Amen. I want you to turn to somebody next to you and say, did you bring your Bibles? Tell them. Ask them. That's a, that's a real tough question. Somebody like, I got my phone. I know, I know. Ephesians 3, that's okay, you're right. Ephesians 3, let's read it, chapter, one, chapter 3, verse 1. For this reason I, Paul, a prisoner for Christ Jesus on behalf of you Gentiles, assuming that you have heard of the stewardship of God's grace that was given to me for you, how the mystery was made known to me by revelation, as I have written briefly. When you read this, you can perceive my insight into the mystery of Christ, which was not made known to the sons of men in other generations that has now been revealed to his holy apostles and prophets by the Spirit. This mystery is that the Gentiles are fellow heirs, members of the same body, and partakers of the promise in Christ Jesus through the gospel. Of this gospel, I was made a minister according to the gifts of God's grace, which was given me by the working of his power. To me, though I am very least of all the saints, the grace was given to preach to the Gentiles the unsearchable riches of Christ, and to bring to light for everyone what is the plan of the mystery hidden for ages in God who created all things. So that through the church, the manifold wisdom of God might now be made known to the rulers and the authorities in heavenly places. This was according to the eternal purpose that he has realized in Christ Jesus our Lord, in whom we have boldness and access with confidence through faith in him. So I ask you not to lose heart over what I am suffering for you, which is for your glory. Heavenly Father, we thank you today for the word and the letter that still speaks to us today. We thank you that these words carry life. And as I speak them, God, may we receive, may I get out of the way, may God, you be received and your word bring life and change everyone, including myself, when we walk out of this place today. In Jesus' name, amen. We are in Ephesians 3. There are six chapters of Ephesians. I'm going to drop the mic. Six chapters of Ephesians. So that means my original title now comes into play. We're only halfway read Ephesians. Thank you. Thank you. Only a few people really appreciate that reference. Today, the title of this message is called Unsolved Mysteries. Unsolved Mysteries. Everybody remember the show Unsolved Mysteries? Yeah? Everybody, anybody ever solve one of the mysteries on Unsolved Mysteries? No. The, the idea behind it was to share mysteries that have never been solved, and hopefully somebody watching may have an inside clue about what, hey, that's my uncle. I can turn him in. Was Maybe something like that would happen. But we are all in a bunch of unsolved mysteries. I want to kind of share with you a few unsolved mysteries in our culture today. Unsolved mystery number one is the Loch Ness Monster. Anybody ever see the Loch Ness Monster? Dennis raised his hand in the first service. I don't know. I, I still haven't talked to him. I got to see how he found the Loch <laughs> Bigfoot. Has anybody seen Bigfoot? No. Maybe you've seen an Italian without his shirt on, but that is not the same as Bigfoot. How about this? This is a mystery some of you might get. Who shot JR? Anybody? Nobody wants to claim it. I talked to Sherry, our administrator. She told me who shot him. Now I know. I'd never really watched that show, but I knew it was a big deal. Now, from my generation, it was who shot Biggie and Tupac. That was a big mystery to this day. Still a mystery. I don't know what happened. Do you know who happened? Diddy did it. <laughs> wow. Okay. Maybe we should discuss this later as a staff. <laughs> That really does make a lot of sense, but I'm not going to go there. Okay, we got to come back. People are like, speak to us, please. Here, here's a mystery for people in the church. I can't believe it. 
Oh, we're on live stream. I'm sorry. We're having a moment. This is a mystery for those that have been raised in the church, the mystery of the side hug and how to get out of the friend zone. Anybody know what I'm talking about? I've never had that issue. I've dated as a young lad, but many of you are trying to get out of the friend zone. And Jake will also share the mystery revealed of the how to get out of the friend zone. Here's another one. Here's, Here's a mystery. Here's a mystery. Why we pray a hedge of protection. Like, in some way, neatly trimmed hedges stop the work of the enemy. He comes up to a hedge, and he's just like, I can't attack him. I can't get through it. And then this last one, and I do get this quite a bit. Do the Rampulas have a TV in their bedroom? That's a real question that people ask me all the time. The second question, if they don't ask that, is, do you know how all these kids happen? And I, of course, I do. And I'm a professional. Anyway, the mystery, the, the, the mystery, the, the mystery that Paul is talking about is not any of this. Thank God. Paul is talking about a mystery that is 2,000 years plus old. A mystery that we have in Christ. Paul is describing riches in the book of Ephesians. And we shared this last week, two weeks ago. The first three chapters are what we have in him. And the last three chapters are how to use them. So this is the third chapter, and Paul is sharing with us something so profound. Chapter one was what? In Christ. We are in Christ. We are in Christ. When you're in Christ, you get all of these things. What a blessing that is. And then Rafe did such a tremendous job last week talking about being alive, talking about repentance. By grace, we're saved. And I love this. He said this. He says, when God sees you, he sees Jesus. And when he sees Jesus, he sees you. Wow. These are such rich nuggets of truth. But chapters 1, 3, 5, and 6, Paul talks about these mysteries. And he does these things, you could see this as a writer, this is very important that we notice this many times, and in fact, in chapter three, he does it twice, he'll use words and phrases like, for this reason, or therefore, and what Paul is saying is, is here's all these things, and here's what you get. Here's all these things that lead to this. Paul is so trying to get the church to understand the mystery. So number one, I want you to write down the mystery. The mystery. What is the mystery? How many like a good mystery? Anybody like a good mystery? I love good mysteries. Now, bear with me. I got ice in there and I got to take care of too. Totally unplanned. I was just so... Let's pretend this service never happened. Let's start over again. This feels like a behind the scenes. Anyway. The mystery. The mystery of God is so key. And I love mysteries because, like, I love, I love really two different, well, I guess I love three story, three different kinds of movies. I love kids' movies because that's all I watch. But then I also love movies that I don't have to think, right? Things like Avengers, things that aren't possible. People go, but that's not real. And that's why I like it. So that, and then I love the mystery, the thrillers, right? And I love movies where they take you on a journey and you have to figure it out. Paul is a horrible screenwriter because he is intentionally trying to get you to discover what the mystery is. He wants you to know this is the mystery. Verse 6, he says this. This mystery is that the Gentiles, the nations are fellow heirs, members of the same body, and partakers of the promise in Christ Jesus through the gospel. Now, unless you are a Jew in this church today, this statement applies to you. The mystery is simple. You are now allowed and welcomed into the kingdom through the gospel. Now, I know this doesn't make a big difference to, okay, I don't really understand, but it's a huge deal. Because you were not written about in the Old Testament. Your people didn't come into this. Now, if you are a Jew, great. Hey, good for you. But for us Gentiles, we now have been brought in. Paul is writing this to the church of Ephesus for a reason. Paul knows that he's speaking to a lot of Gentiles who now have adopted the faith of Christianity. We talked about this. 
The city of Ephesus, as Rafe said, is like Las Vegas. You can worship any god you want. There is so much decadence. In fact, there was temple prostitutes in the temple of Artemis. So you can kind of get a gist of what was happening in there. There were sacrifices. There were evil things happening. And these Gentiles were getting radically saved and going from in the temple of Artemis to worshiping Jesus the next day. And so Paul was addressing to the Jews that were Christians that they are welcomed in. They are now part of the mystery. The mystery is that God is welcoming them in. Now, mystery is all throughout the society. The Greeks, they believed that the gods had knowledge that was a benefit for humans, but they kept it a secret. They would reveal to only people who were worthy by performing certain rituals. So if you were uh, doing enough of these sacrifices, they would reveal a mystery to you. The Jews, they believed that the mysteries were the inner workings of God, of Yahweh, with his divine plan for humanity, and he would only reveal them to the prophets. And now Paul is saying something that many of us has adopted as normal, was profound in his day. Paul is now saying that this mystery is for everyone. Everyone, not the Gentiles, everyone. When I say Gentiles, I'm talking about the nations. The nations, every person, every color, every ethnicity and background. And this is still a mystery today because many of us, if we've been in church for any length of time, we believe you have to do certain things to be a certain Christian. Now, we wouldn't say that here because that sounds so hypocritical. But the reality is, in your mind, you believe if you don't do, you're not going to get in. And Christ is really the only doorkeeper to letting you in. It's not your tithing. It's not your attendance. It's not your serving. It's not your studying of the word. Christ is in you through the receiving of the gospel. F.B. Mayer, who is an author and writer of commentary, says this, we are God's trustees for men. To each of us is given some special phase of truth, which we must pass on to others by the force of our character or by the teaching of our lips. It was given to Paul to make known the great truth that Gentiles might enter the church of God on equal terms with Jews. During the earlier stages of human education, this secret had been withheld. But with the advent of the Son of Man, the doors into the church had been thrown open to all. Paul's insistence on this truth was the main cause of the hatred and the opposition which checkered his life. Fellow heirs, fellow members, fellow partakers, this truth was not the result of logical argument, but it had been communicated by direct revelation as was so much else in Paul's teaching. There was a lot of tension when Paul said this. Paul was stating something. In fact, many of you remember a few months ago, I talked about the great debate, right, between Peter and Paul. And it was like, can we let these Gentiles in, but they should be circumcised. Can you imagine being a 40-something-year-old man, and you just gave yourself over to Jesus, and next thing you know, here comes a guy with a knife, and the next step of your salvation. Come on, little buddy. Let's do this. And you're like, wow. And people were doing it. But Paul was like, what are we doing? This is a Jewish tradition. Jesus is superseding all of this. It's no longer your circumcision that gets you into heaven, but it's Jesus that does. Now, I use circumcision because it's the most craziest, but there were so many other laws, so many other things, so many other things you had to do. Jesus came and did it. He did it for us. You're no longer justified by your outward actions, but you're justified by Christ's salvation. The reality is today, in 2021, Christianity is mainly led by Gentiles than it is by Jews. There is clearly, clearly many more Gentile Christians, you and I, than there are Jewish Christians right now in the world. It's funny how there's been this, so to speak, handoff, but what is this gospel? 1 Corinthians 13, 1 Corinthians 15, 3 through 4 says this, that Christ died for our sins in accordance with the scriptures. He was buried and he was raised on the third day according to the scriptures. That's the gospel. He died. He was buried. He rose again. Believing in that he died, he's buried, and he rose again. That's the gospel. Pastor Mark, it's so easy. Well, then why do we have a hard time explaining it? 
Why do we have a hard time living it? Why do we have a hard time that Paul has to write a letter and say, let people in? This is not an exclusive club. Anybody that accepts Jesus, Romans 10 says, you confess with your mouth, believe in your heart. You get in. And now people are like, well, well, I don't know. You know, that guy's, he's crazy. I don't know about him. Uh, he's nuts, you know. That crazy uncle that comes Thanksgiving, ah, he's definitely out. You cannot determine who God begins to reveal his nature to. So we have the mystery. And number two, we have the mission. The mystery leads to a mission. The mission, church, today is Ephesians 3, 9 and 10. Paul, again, speaks it. He tells you the mystery, then he tells you the mission. It's to bring to light for everyone, what is the plan of the mystery hidden for ages in God who created all things? So that, therefore, <laughs> here it is, the payoff, through the church, through you, not Pastor Eddie, not Pastor Josh, not Pastor Mark, I'm talking about the global church, everyone that confesses Jesus, through the church, the manifold wisdom of God might now be made known to the rulers and authorities in heavenly places. Now, I look at that and I think, well, kings and queens, they're going to know about me. No, Paul was speaking to another dimension, another dimension, another dimension. He was speaking to another, nobody got it. Okay, another dimension. Because in Ephesians 6, verse 12, this is what he says. We do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against rulers and authorities and cosmic powers. Paul is saying that when you were brought in, Gentiles, you now serve notice to the cosmic authorities that God's wisdom is so much great. Listen, when you gave your life to Jesus, hell said, oh, heck no. They were scared. Why? Because all throughout history, he focused on one group of people, the Jews. The Jews, if I could just make the Jews' life miserable, I can stop the seed. I can stop the seed. I can stop the promise. Then God does something crazy. He opens it up to everybody. Now the Gentiles, people in Africa, people in Asia, people in Australia, people in Russia, everyone that confesses God can be brought in. Now the enemy's going, I can't compete with this. Every one of you serves notice. So let me say this. You're not a national movement. You're not a regional movement. You are, listen to this, a cosmic, intergalactic, multidimensional movement. You probably have never heard that talked about before. You've never heard that you're walking in a movement that is cosmic, that is universal, that is multidimensional, but you don't see Christianity the way Paul was seeing it. He's saying, I am making known this mystery that has been hidden for ages. People in the past didn't know about it. I get to present it. I'm, a, I'm, rece I'm receiving it. I'm delivering it. And now you get to serve notice to the cosmic powers that you are serving the one true living God. We are God's secret weapon. Jesus, he did an okey doke on Satan. He did an okey doke. Jesus had one lineage. He kept, God kept concentrating on one group of people. And then all of a sudden, Jesus says, guess what? I'm opening this thing up. This is like Costco with no membership. Everybody comes in. Come on in. Everybody gets discount. Don't show me your card. Come on in. And here's the good news. He did it, and it became a worldwide revival. You are here today because Paul wrote an open-ended letter to the church of Spring Hill for 2021. We talked about this. He did not put Ephesus in the original manuscript because he knew by the leading of the Holy Spirit that we would be reading this today and we would need to be reminded that we are grafted into the vine. You know what that does? You know what that does? This is what it does. Everything about the Old Testament is now my lineage. When I read the prophetic statements, I get to tap into that. When I hear about God's chosen people, that's me. That's you. Oh, man, the word comes alive. It's not a history book. It's my legacy. Here's, here's the interesting kicker with all of this. Paul is in prison writing this. Look what he says in verse 1. He says, for this reason, I'm getting ready. I'm getting ready to reveal. I'm revealing things in verse 1 and 2. I'm revealing a big one in verse 3. But for this reason alone, I, Paul, a prisoner for Christ Jesus 
on behalf of you Gentiles. I'm in here so that you can live better out there. And look what he says in verse 13. Paul says, do not lose heart over what I'm suffering. We don't talk about suffering in church today. In fact, I just said it. Now you're like, oh God, please don't talk about it. I don't want to deal with it. Suffering, I drive on 31 and there's traffic. That's suffering. There's too long of a line at Starbucks. That's suffering. I put something in my cart. It was a great discount. And then it ran out of stock. That's suffering. That's not suffering, folks. <laughs> suffering is what Paul went through. Paul persecuted the church. Hear me. Paul persecuted the church and then became the one that was done to what he used to do to people was being done to him now. He knew all the tricks of the trade. I mean, he probably walked and said, I know where to go. I know what sell. Because I used to throw people in them. Now I'll just take myself to the back. He just knew exactly what was going to happen, and he freely did it. He said, don't worry about me. I am a prisoner for Papa Chuck. I am a prisoner for Hannah Coons. I am doing this so that you can understand the mysteries of God. I am writing letters here. Oh, man. He didn't count it as an issue. Man, Lord, I'm sorry for complaining about things that really aren't suffering. I'm a prisoner in Christ on behalf of you. Wow. Paul's global spiritual mission was more important than his physical freedom. We know that this is towards the end of his life. I don't know if he knew it was coming. I'm sure he figured it out. He didn't care. This is a joy to write this. Let's keep reading Ephesians 14. This is good. I preach myself dry, thro throat's dry. I'm, it's completely it's amazing. Verse 14. For this reason... There it is again. For this reason, therefore, for this reason, I bow my knees before the Father. He is in prison. <laughs> and he is thanking God. I mean, how horrible of a guard must it be? You want this dude to suffer, and he's rejoicing. He's just writing letters. He said, look, just keep me in here a little longer. I got a couple more letters I got to write. He said, for this reason, I bow my knees before the Father from whom every family in heaven and on earth is named, that according to the riches of his glory, he may grant you today, Southview, to be strengthened with power through his spirit in your inner being so that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith, that you, Church of Spring Hill, being rooted and grounded in love, may have strength to comprehend with all the saints what is the breadth and the length and the height and the depth, and to know the love of Christ that surpasses knowledge, that you may be filled with all the fullness of God. He is essentially praying chapters 1, 2, and 3. He's praying it over the people right now. And then he says this, Now to him who is able to do far more abundantly than all we can ask or think according to the power at work within us to him be the glory in the church and in Christ Jesus throughout all generations forever and ever. Amen. Drops the mic. Still got three more chapters to read. Paul is like, no, 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 no. This is what it's all about. It's the mystery revealed. It's the mission we fulfill. And it's the activation we walk in. Number three, activation. You have been activated. Why? Paul says, for this reason, therefore, he continues to say, I'm giving it to you. For this reason, chapters one, two, and three are now being prayed by Paul as a blessing of activation over the body of Christ. Paul is a really bad magician. He wants you to understand the mystery. He wants you to see what's behind the curtain. He doesn't want to sugarcoat it. He doesn't want you. Listen, here's the deal. Jesus revealed the mystery. Paul got to explain it. Look at this. Look at this. Matthew 13, 11. Jesus says this. He's talking to his disciples and he says, to you it has been given to know the secrets of the kingdom of heaven, but to them it has not been given. Jesus was saying, disciples, I'm sharing with you these nuggets, but everyone else, they don't get it. Then he says this in verse 35. This was to fulfill what was spoken by the prophet Isaiah. I will open my mouth in parables. I will utter what has been hidden since the foundations of the world. Jesus was sharing parables. Paul is dropping nuggets. He's now giving you Twitterable <laughs> sentences. He is sharing with you the mysteries that only, listen, I've, I've said this before. I wish I could be at the, at the, at the fire that Jesus would light every night with the disciples because we, we know in scripture, 
Jesus would share these parables, and he wouldn't even explain them many times. Like, he would share them, and people would be like, wow, that's great. Okay, Jesus. And where'd Jesus go? He left. He, oh, we don't get to hear the ending. And then the disciples would get around the fire, and they'd go, they'd go like, okay, now tell us. And he would tell them, you now have been welcomed to the fire. You've now been brought in, and now you get to sit at the feet of Jesus. Now, granted, we're not at the fire with the disciples, but you get the Holy Spirit. This is even better. Oh, how can it be better, Pastor Mark? Because now the Holy Spirit's in you. So you get the revelation. Paul was saying the revelation of the Holy Spirit has come upon Gentiles, and now you can understand the mysteries. Thank you. You can understand the mysteries of God. One of my favorite movies, I, again, I said I like mysteries, uh, uh, thrillers, whatever you would call it, is Inception. Anybody like Inception? Now, anybody's not seen Inception? Okay, so at the end, <laughs> listen, it's safe to say you're not going to see it. But anyway, the point is, I'm not going to give away the ending, but for those of you that saw it, the ending blew my mind. Anybody know what I'm talking Just give me a nod. Don't tell me what it is, but I may say it's like something. Anyway, I want to say it. <sighs> <laughs> it's not key to the story. The point is, the mystery went dark. And I got up out of my seat in the movie theater. I said, what do we do? How do I live my life? Where do we go? Is this, what level am I on? What, what, who, where is Leonardo DiCaprio? How do I get out of here? Somebody give me something to turn. Ooh, okay. The point is, the point is, the point is, Paul is revealing everything. Screen went dark, then Paul comes up and goes, let me explain everything. Let me explain everything you just watched. This is how big of a deal it was to the Gentiles and the Jews in that day. Ephesus was, 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 was such bustling and there was so much going on, but there was so much growth in the church. And you can imagine, the Jews probably walked around, the Jewish Christian people, they walked around and they probably felt a little bit more accepted, a little bit more pious. Not like the church today does that, not at all. Never happens, never happens. The Gentiles walked around and go, probably trying to perform. Because they're coming out of, of this paganistic society. So they're realizing that the rituals that made me worthy, I don't have to do them? Wait, I don't, I don't have to sacrifice things and do all that weird stuff and bring all this stuff? And it, I, you know, like I, I'm in? You're in. And so there was this tension. Now, I believe there's tension today in the body of Christ. I believe that many of us, including myself, feel like we have to earn things from the Lord. I know that many of you, and I know it never happened, that you feel like if I read the word today, it's going to be a good day. Now, naturally, it probably will be a better day because you're focusing yourself in Christ. But the reality is, is God loves you. So I want you to hear me today. Don't lose this mystery. It is a solved mystery. You could check it off. It's done. This episode's over. It's solved. But may it be a mystery to you that reverences, causes you to be full of reverence, that you never stop worshiping him. Verse 20, now to him who is able to do far more abundantly than all we can ask or think according to the power at work within us. He has given you power within you, and he could do a greater and exceedingly more than you could think or ask. Well, Pastor Mark, why haven't I gotten this thing that I've been wanting? Many times it's because you're wanting something that is not in the plan that God has for you. It's not in your best interest. Why hasn't God given me Mr. or Mrs. Right? Maybe because Mr. or Mrs. Right really isn't Mr. or Mrs. Right. My kids would love a present on December 24th, but there's something about opening it up on December 25th. Many times we ask from God, but God's like a God of timing. I know the ultimate timing. God wants to bless you. God wants to work in you. The kingdom of God is here. Jesus walked all throughout the earth and he said, the kingdom of God is here. The kingdom of God is here. And his disciples and even the people following him kept going, you have an army? You, where's the soldiers? You got horses? Where, where, where's, the, where's the swords? Where, where? No, no, no. You don't understand. The kingdom of God is here. It's here. It's here. The kingdom of God is at hand. And finally, Paul begins to reveal the mysteries. The kingdom of God is open for business. You're all welcome in, and now you serve notice to the principalities and cosmic powers that God rules and reigns above every circumstance. Ooh. So why do we struggle with these unsolved mysteries? People are sick. 
yet God still heals. Evil feels like it's loud and present, yet God says in his word that he's reigning. Depression and anxiety are at an all-time high, yet God has not given me a spirit of fear. The history of the church isn't a perfect one, yet God continues to use us. And how about this? There is a huge divide. We've talked about this over the last few weeks, of theology. And God still uses all of it for his glory. He can use Calvinists or Arminius. He can use it all. We're fighting, and Paul would be saying this to you today. There's so much bigger than this. This is what, this is the mystery that supersedes it all. That you are fellow heirs, members of the same body, partakers of the promise in Christ Jesus through the gospel. If you would close your eyes right now, I invite Rachel up here today, Mission Sunday, but I want to pray this over you. Heavenly Father, right now we just ask that you would teach us to really know the depth of your love. And I pray today if there's anyone in this place that does not know Jesus, that this would be the moment that they would realize they have been welcomed in. As Paul was in prison writing this, it still applies today. If you confess with your mouth, you believe in your heart, believe that Jesus is the Son of God, that he was raised from the dead, you are saved. And so today, let's delight in this mystery in Jesus' name. Hey guys, thanks so much for joining us today. It was a great service. We're so glad you're with us.